Nehemiah chapter 12. <clears throat> now these are the priests and the Levites that went up with Zerubbabel, the son of Shetio, and Jeshua, Shariah, Jeremiah, Ezra. Well, that's not Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah. Amariah, Malka, Hadish, Shekiniah, Raham, Merimoth, Idu, Ginnithal, Avijah, and uh, you can find that name, Luke 1 5. That's the course of John the Baptist's father, which I can never remember his name. It says the course of Avijah, or Abaya in the Greek. We can talk Greek for a minute. You run that back, here it is right here. Myamim, Medaiah, Bilgah, Shemaniah, Joribib, Jediah, Shalu, Amok, Hekiah, Jedidiah. These were the chief of the priests and of their brethren in the days of Jeshua. All right, so with the names we just read were chief of the priests. They weren't the high priests, but they were above the priests. Moreover, the Levites, Jeshua, Benuai, Kedemiah, Sherebiah, Judah, and Mananiah, which was over the thanksgiving, he and his brethren. Oh, so they had priests that were over the thanksgiving. In America, uh, 365 days, 366, if you count the leap day, we only have one day of thanksgiving, and we give that to pigs and turkeys. There was a group of priests, uh, yeah, uh, Levites, excuse me, that were just for thanksgiving to God. And Abukiah and Unai, their brethren, were over against them in the watches. The watches doesn't mean the things that you put on, the, on your arm or put up on a wall. The watches were, you know, uh, scouting, lookouts, guards. It's a uh, time of day, too, because... Uh, at one point it says in the gospel where Jesus was on the fourth watch, walking on the water. And Jeshua begat Jehoiakim, Jehoiakim begat Eshuba, and Eshuba begat Joida. Joida begat Jonathan, and Jonathan begat Jadua. All, and, in, and in the days of Jehoiakim were priests, the chief of the fathers of Sharui, Merari, Jeremiah, Hananiah, of Ezra, Mishilim, Aramariah, Jehonanan, uh, Milku, Jonathan, and Sheba, and Joseph, I like that name, and Haram, and Ada, and Merimoth, and he Elkai, Idu, and Zechariah, that's a good name to read, and Jerome, Meshimum, of Abijah, Zechariah, Minimum, Madiah, Pildiah, and Bilgal, and Shemel, Shemaliah, Jonathan, Jehonadan, and Jerob, Mananiah of Jedi, Uzai of Shirai, Kali of a monk, Eber of Hedekiah, Hashabiah of Jedi, Nathaniel. Okay. Wet in tongue, get back in order. The Levites in the days of Eshliab, Joida, and Jonathan and Jedidua were recorded chief of the fathers. Recorded means they put it down in the book. Now, let's stop right here for a minute and make a little side note. If we've said about Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther, that there are definitely history books. We know that's history. We're reading history. But yet, their prophecy, what would all these names tell you? Look into the future. Whether before, or definitely, 100% definitely, but maybe before the rapture. I'm saying maybe, may not, maybe after the rapture. Somewhere is going to be found the registry of the Jews. More so of the Levites and the priests. You're going to find their names just like you find in Nehemiah. Somehow those names are going to be found among the people. And you say, well, who cares about reading all these names and Nehemiah and all that? There's going to be a day and time in the, in the nation of Israel, they're going to be like, these names are going to be very important because someone's going to be able to trace their names back to these names. 
Isn't it funny how in uh, August 1st, 2013, there's only one person can trace his name back to Noah and back to Abraham, uh, Adam. And you find that in Luke chapter 3 and you find it in Matthew chapter 1. Only Jesus Christ can, chase his, can find his genealogy all the way back to Noah and Adam. Now you can say, every human being can say, well, we go back to Noah and we go back to Adam. You can't find the roots. I believe there's one preacher I know, his father, his brother, somebody in his family, they did that. They went into that genealogy, which the Bible says don't. Well, they came to this one point in time, it's like, boom, it stopped. Like all of a sudden they came down from Mars and here they are. And doing more research, you know what they found out? The guy's father changed their name. What do you do there? That name that they had was erased from history. That's as far as you can go. Now whether it was law or whatever it was. Listen, a lot of Jews, because of World War II, Adolf Hitler and the Holocaust, they changed their names. When they came to America, they were get, they gave themselves German names to hide. Now they're intermarried with all the people of the world, and you get a Jewish woman that marries a Gentile. Well, she marries a Smith or um, a Taylor. Well, she loses that Jewish name. That was her father's. And her children now are part Jew. I mean, where do you see that? You see that in Ezra and Nehemiah, where they married into married among the Babylonians and all the people in the land. Don't you see? We are in the days of right now, Nehemiah and Ezra. The Jews are married among all, among all. But one day, somehow, some way, God is going to reveal to that Jew who he is, especially, especially if he's a Levite or a priest. Why? Because we read about one family that said they couldn't find the genealogy, so they were put out. I think pollution was the word. That's why these names are in here. It may not be important to us, but it's important to Jesus Christ, and it's important to God's people. And they're going to set up and do the sacrifices. What happened to us the king when he went in there and offered his, listen, maybe great attention. He went in there and offered his, his incense. He got leper. He became a leper. He didn't get leper. He got, became a leper. Well, that's not going to do you too good if you set up the temple and everybody comes out with leprosy. Or one guy touches the the, the ark because it's shaped and boom he's a pile of dust you get three of the priests of Aaron they go in there with their big lighter and boom they're smoking so this genealogy that's why they're here I'm uh, listen I am pronouncing these names wrong I'll admit it to you I'll admit it to the people that are in heaven in the new earth I'll walk to them and say listen I got your name wrong many people get my name wrong Don't think they're going to throw me out of New Jerusalem because I mispronounced the name. I gave it more credit than I actually read through these names. So that's why they're here. Verse 23, I believe. The sons of Levi, the chief of the fathers, were written in the book of the Chronicles. Even into the days of Johanan, the son of Elisha. Well, I won't say nothing. It may not be possible. but These names are going to come back. Then the chief of the Levites, Eshabiah, Shebiah, and Jeshua, the son of Kabneel, and their brethren over against them, to praise and give thanks according to the commandment of David, the man of God, warred over against war. And I'm trying to get away with the burdens I've had in my life recently. And I'm going to point out things in the church and all that as it comes after. But here in the Old Testament, where you didn't have a surety of salvation. Here you could 
364 days in a year, you can do what's proper, die in the 365th day in sin and go to hell. Unlike a Christian. A Christian, you're sealed, you can't lose it. But where do you have today in the churches this office here of praise and giving thanks? Solely to God. And don't tell me to worship and music, sir, because we're there, yeah, flapping the flesh. Banging our feet. And when they're done, yay, thank you very much. Where is there a service? What happened to the prayer meetings that happened midweek, first of all? Where is the night or day that you come and you just praise God and have testimonies? Have to te I guess God hasn't done nothing. Because when it's asked, anybody got a testimony and nobody raised their hands and somebody raised his hand, they all they talk about what they did. Here's an offer of giving thanks and praise. I believe that was the, the intentions of the celebration of Thanksgiving. When it was given out to give the, the, the Creator, the one that has given us the, our land of, of America, I believe it was for God. But today it's for turkey uh, stuffing, make your belly bung, dung lap over your belt, and a bunch of high paid, drug infested men fighting over a little pigskin. You know? I wonder how many times last year. On Thanksgiving in America, how many homes that celebrate Thanksgiving? I don't care if it was just a husband and wife or, or a widow with her children at the table to, you know, family from all over the world. Okay, I wonder how many times they honestly bow their head and thank the Lord. Well, let me let me go one more step further. Maybe I'm taking this verse a little more, but let's. How many times every day? Do people gather around their food and really thank the Lord and ask Him to bless it? Listen, there are times, when, listen, I'm not saying I, sometimes to me it seems like the prayer I do is repetition, so I try to do something different. But I thank the Lord for the food that we got because we shouldn't have food on the budget we have. And there'd be times I'm eating a meal, it's like, wow, Lord, this is great, thank you. I know I already thanked you, but wow, this is Great, this is wonderful. I mean, if I've had an overactive belly because I'm done, done up under my, under my belt, I'm laying down and dressing like, Lord, that was good. Thank you very much. Where is that? And here it is right here. It's, it's in, the, in the priest and the Levites. Say, Let's celebrate God. Verse 25, uh, no, verse 24, according to the commandment of David, the man of God, ward over against ward. That means room on the room, at the room, on the room, they were having celebrations for God. Whether this, you know, whether this room had wheat, this room had, whatever it is, each of the rooms, are, wow, this room is filled, thank you, God. Lord, this room is filled, and what we this room is just for your offerings that you've given us, that we can have the daily offerings that we thank you, God. This or this room, maybe this is just for the food for the priest. Lord, our priest can eat. Thank you, Lord. And the guy goes in the room. My room's empty, but thank you, Lord. I got a room to fill up. Manai and Bakabukaya, Obadiah. Meshulam, Talam, Akiv were porters keeping the ward of the thresholds of the gates. Now, if you read John chapter 10, you need to pay attention to these porters. That porter in chapter, John chapter 10 is a type of the Holy Spirit. Opens up the door that we may go in. You can't, listen, your salvation, you can't say you did it. Listen, God's the one that gave it to you. The Holy Spirit's the one that opened up the door, and God's the one that grants you the salvation. Here are guys right here open up the doors. Great study to look into the porters. It says keeping the ward. Keeping. Holy Spirit keeps us, seals us, never departs, doesn't leave the room. 
And Jesus Christ says that we're a part of the sheep go. Only time that we leave and the Holy Spirit leaves is when the Lord comes and blows that that trump. And how many people testify that the Holy Spirit has not done his job by saying, Oh, I lost it or I can lose it. You better realize you're lying against what the job of the Holy Spirit is. Or you're just lying about your salvation, either or. These were in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Jeshua, the son of Jezuic, in the days of Nehemiah, the governor, and of Ezra, the priest, the scribe. So Nehemiah is governor, and Ezra is the priest and scribe who writes down things, records the word of God. At the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, they sought the Levites out of all their places. Alright, so they called the Levites. We're going to dedicate the walls. Come on, we need you. Both with thanksgiving, look at that again, and with singing, with cymbals, with psalteries, and with harps. I don't see no drums there. So neither should you in the church house. Well, we don't have drums. Yeah. But the CDs do. I think about that the other day. I don't see drums anywhere when it comes to God's worship. The sons of the singers gathered together, to, gathered themselves together, both out of the plain country round about Jerusalem and from the villages in Naphtali. And from the house of Gilgal, uh, the fields of Geba and Azimuth, for the singers had build, builded then villages round about Jerusalem. Imagine the singers had their own little village. You ready for this one? You want you want the false advertising, the devil? You want to know that the devil knows the, the book, that the devil is the first song leader? You want to know that Satan is in charge of music? I'll tell you who this is. I'll tell you what you find in this verse. The village people. A group that grew up with your mom and I singing. Their sexual characteristics can be very called for and very questionable what kind of men they were. What was one of their songs? YMCA, Young Christian Men's Association. Ah! How about in the Navy? Were they ever in the Navy? You gotta realize Satan was God's original choir director. You know where Satan gets into the churches? He gets through them through the music. And he makes you think, hey, we're doing a godly song here, and it's puking, making God sick, Revelation chapter 3. Village people within the Bible. Pressing it too far. Here's the singers, and they're in the village. I'm going to write that note down, too. See, yeah, I learn new things. And the priests and the Levites purified themselves and purified the people and the gates and the wall. You're unclean. Even your flesh saved. Your, your flesh is, is unclean. Hasn't been redeemed yet. Needs to be put under the blood when it sins. Then I, Nehemiah, see, see, Nehemiah said, I, what's that mean? That means him. He may, if he didn't write the whole book, he wrote parts of it. But there's no question that Nehemiah is the author in this book by the personal pronouns. Brought up the princes of Judah upon the wall and appointed two great companies of them that gave thanks. Where, whereof one went on the right hand upon the wall toward the dung gate. So two couple giving thanks, giving thanks, giving thanks. After them went Hushaiah and half of the princes of Judah, Nazariah, Ezra, and Meshulam, 
And I don't think that's the Ezra of Ezra because it said the half princes of Judah. Ezra was a priest. You got to watch. You got to put those things together there. We're talking about princes of Judah. Judah and Benjamin and Shammuel and Jeremiah. It's not the Jeremiah of Jeremiah. And certain of the priest's sons with trumpets. Now that's what I love. I love a trumpet. You can take the piano and burn it down, okay? I hate the piano. That's personally me. You give me a trumpet. I like to have a trumpet with, with the Lord's traditional hymns there in the book. Have the roll is called up yonder with a trumpet. Jesus saves with a trumpet. Namely, Zechariah, the son of Jonathan, the son of... Look that Jonathan keeps showing up for some reason. That's an interesting name. Son of Shemaiah, the son of Mananiah, the son of Micaiah, the son of Zechariah, the son of Asaph. <clears throat> and his brethren, Shemaiah, and Azariah, Menaliah, Galiliah, Malai, Methaniel, and Judah, and Hananiah, with the musical instruments of David, the man of God. And the scribe, I mean, and Ezra described before that. There is Ezra described. Like I said, we've already seen it. You want to see the instruments? Go back and read the life of David. Read what, what instruments he came up with: the the salt buck, the flute, the harp, and other instruments. Like never a drum, never a guitar. I mean, a guitar has six strings. Six is the number of men. It's telling you, I mean, I believe in the truth. I believe as it is. You don't like me, you don't like the Bible. Sorry. And the fountain gate, which was over against them, they went up by the, alt uh, by the stairs of the city of David. At the going up to the wall above the house of David, even unto the water gate eastward. And you can follow the direction back in chapter, I think it was 9. Seven on, between 7 and 9, they talk about the, the gates and the walls. And the other company of them that gave thanks went over against them. And I after them, and the half of the people upon the wall, from beyond the tower of the furnaces, even unto the broad wall. And from the, above the gate of Ephraim, above the old gate, above the fish gate, and the tower of Heniel, and the tower of Mia, even unto the sheep gate, and they stood still in the prison, and they stood still in the prison gate. They're going around thanking God that these, these walls are built up. They're giving God the glory. So stood the two companies of them that gave thanks in the house of God, and I and the half of the rulers with me, the priests Elkiah and Malisha, Minimum, Micaiah, my tongue is about dead, Elani, Zechariah, and Hananiah with trumpets, with trumpets. Why don't you see trumpets in churches? That is, seems to be the, the, the music or instrument choice by God. Doesn't a trumpet only have three little valves or something like that? Oh, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Aren't they usually gold in color? They didn't have valves. And the, and the Spirit of the Lord here is, actually I think these are probably two, with rams. Ram's horns and all that. With horns in the Bible is power, strength. You use your wind for these instruments. And what does, what does Jesus say about the Holy Spirit in John chapter 3? What does it say about man when he had life in Genesis 2? God breathed into him. Why can't you breathe back God's instrument? No. Bunga, 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 bunga. A jing, a jing, a jing, a jing, a bunga, bunga, bunga. African music. Where did that come from, from down south in America? From the Africans that you brought here for labor.
You acquired African music. Listen, listen. Sin City, Roman Catholic City is not far from here. It's over in the sewer pot of Louisiana called, uh, uh, I can't think what the name of the stupid place, New Orleans. And evidently, you have not checked the word jazz in the dictionary to know what jazz means. Or rock and roll in Detroit. Now get off that. Where was I? Verse 42. I'm being good. Meshulai, Shemini, and Elzai, and Uzai, and you know, some guys look at this, <laughs> he can't say his name, but he's not paying attention to what I've been saying, though. Machali, Elan, Ezer, and the singers sang loud. And Jezariah, their overseer. It says they sang loud. They didn't get up there to perform their body art. They didn't make love to the microphone. They didn't have microphones. Also that day they offered great sacrifices. Not just sacrifices, great sacrifices. You ever given God a great sacrifice after thanking Him? You ever march around your home praising God, thanking God for everything that's there? You ever thank God marching around your home that no one's broken in, taking anything of yours? Have you ever marched around your house that night and realize all your family is asleep and well and comforted. That if it's hot outside, it's cold inside. If it's cold outside, it's hot inside. Make you want to change your mind if God destroys this country and puts you underneath a bridge for the rest of your life. Put you in a uh, couple uh, plywoods and, and cardboard box. Great sacrifices and rejoiced. Have you given great sacrifice and rejoiced? And not, uh -huh, I can use that money to go out to eat, get me a coffee, cool water. I could have used that money for something else. I could have drowned a whole bunch of worms with that money. It would be funny if God, and I don't know if it's going to happen, if God called up every worm that you sunk on Sunday and have him give a testimony. A little worm walks up there with a little scuba suit. Yeah, I was on Sunday morning. He had me sunk. That'd be funny. That'd be really funny if God did that. Also that day they offered great sacrifice and rejoice. For God had made them rejoice with great joy. Great sacrifices, rejoice, and God made them to rejoice with, with great joy. Now then, when God made it, I don't think God's holding him by the neck. Okay, rejoice, rejoice, rejoice! Burn! <laughs> rejoice or burn! Rejoice or burn! Rejoice or burn! I don't think it's like that. I think as their great sacrifice and their rejoice, I think God's loading them with blessings right there and fulfilling their heart and giving them peace and giving them mercy and giving them grace. And the only they can do is rejoice even more. Heck, if they had spiritual clothes like the Christian, they'd be peeing them like crazy, and Michael and Gabriel would be going about in heaven with the heavenly laundry. When you sacrifice to God, you give him great sacrifice, and you rejoice in God, all you can do is rejoice even more. More so with a Christian when you do, listen, the Bible says, Yea, they that have lived godly shall suffer persecution. But isn't it a wonderful thing when a guy is cussing you out in your face, you're happy. Isn't it a wonderful thing that a guy walks off and says, Yeah, I enjoy hell. I've been there and come back. And you're, you, your heart is broken, but you're joyful because you've done what God told you to do. I just wonder, when, when, when somebody says that down here in Daytona Beach, Florida, below the Bible Belt, I just feel sorry for that poor sucker that walks off, oh, I enjoy that. I wonder how many Christian family he's got in, in churches around here and haven't told him nothing. I ain't too happy to below the Bible Belt down here, I'll tell you that. Sour. This from a Yankee. In the day they offered great sacrifice and rejoice from God and made them rejoice with great joy. The wives also and the children rejoice. And the children, the wives. 
Imagine that. The family together rejoicing with God. I've seen churches, I've seen children down here in churches rejoicing and ain't over God. I've seen children all over America rejoice. Not over God. We'll see a six foot rat. Man, in my time, man, you brought me to a six foot rat, I'd run away. Children rejoice to go on these stupid rides and roller coasters and all that, but oh, to go in the church house? What did the pastor say the other night? Well, oh, Sundays are bad for children in church. Why? You know, school's a burden for them, so you send them to church with a burden, so now school and church has become a burden. Oh, but they can go to Yellowstone and, and uh, New York or see those four faces on a rock and all that. That's a joy. Hey, even these Christian camps, they have all kinds of fun. Five minutes Bible and all the rest of the day playing. So that the joy of Jerusalem was heard even afar off. Now imagine that. Would it be great if we're sitting here, if we can hear people rejoicing over the Lord rather than start cars going around in a big circle? Would it be great if we can go downtown and hear people rejoice over the preaching of the gospel rather than hear, you don't even know what you're singing? Rejoicing the wrong thing. And at that time were some point over the chambers of the treasurers. These are chambers in the temple, rooms. For the offerings. Okay, there were chambers for the offerings. For the first fruits. There were chambers for the first fruits. And for the tithes. To gather them into them out of the fields of the cities and possessions, a portions of the law for the priests and the Levites. You got God honoring, Bible believing, real men that love God and want to do right. They're a preacher for church and they got to go get a secular job. The Bible calls us priests. You got Christians are down and out. I mean, literally, today in this age, they're down and out. They ain't got no money. They can't get no job. And they're running to the government because churches are starving themselves. You know what the welfare system is supposed to be? It's supposed to be the church. And then you wouldn't have people laying around smoking cigarettes, drinking beer, and making babies all the time, not doing nothing, collecting money, if the church did what she's supposed to do. And you got these fat cat preachers get up in these church and all that, and they got gold teeth and limousines and all this other kind of junk. You got your reward, buddy. You got your reward already. The first fruits, the, the tithing, the offerings, and all that were for the priests. And the Revelation 1 says we're priests. And kings, you bring your stuff to the king. Portions of law for the priests and Levites. And Judah rejoiced for the priests and for the Levites that waited. Waited. Patience. I hate that word. Waited also means like you go to a restaurant, a waiter or a waitress. And they did the service that they're supposed to do. And for their service of waiting and doing what they're supposed to do. Isn't that what it says over there in Acts chapter 5? Is it talking about the, de the deacons that there's to be in the church? That we do not wait the tables? Does it say something like that? It's service. Both the singers and the quarters kept the word of their God. And the word of the purification according to the commandments of David 
and of Solomon his son. <clears throat> For in the days of David and Asaph, there's that name again, Of old, of old, as Asaph old, that's the guy that worked with David. That's not the new names that have been showing up. You know, you can't name a child. Oh, you know, if I name my child John, he's going to be just like the John in the Bible. <laughs> right. Now, if you're a sorry sort of parent that you are, don't even think it. If I name my child, you know, and I guarantee I would not name my child Jezebel. I wouldn't name him Judas. I mean, there's some things in names, but don't think just because you pick yourself a holy name out of a Bible for your child, that child, right, sure. I wouldn't name my child Ichabob. And there's a story about a guy named Ichabob. Ichabob Crane. Were the chief of the singers in songs of praise and thanksgiving unto God. Unto God, not the flesh. Read the book of Psalms. It's not seven words 14 times over. I don't see that in Psalms. Psalms is a hymnal. If you read some of the hymns in your book, your hymnal book, if you read them. Now, I know I can't think of her name, that blind woman. I know she loved the Lord and, and did right and all that was saved. But when we've been there for 10,000 years, I'm sorry, you're wrong. Time stops when we're in eternity. There is no 10,000 years. Look me up when I'm in heaven. Well, you got a new name and a new body. How are they going to know who you are? We're all going to look like Jesus Christ. Oh, you're supposed to stand out above everybody. Some people got the Bible wrong. And all Israel in the days of Zerubbabel, in the days of Nehemiah, gave the portions of the singers and the porters every day his portion. So not only did they not only take care of the priests and the Levites, they took care of the singers. You know what their job was? I'll give you a thousand dollar guess. They just sing praises all the time for the Lord. When anybody walked around the temple or came up to the temple, they would hear these guys singing to the Lord. I'll give you the modern technology today. Solomon says there's nothing new under the sun, right? I'll give you what, what this is. Turn on the radio. You'll see what's going on right here in Nehemiah. They're singing 24 hours a day, aren't they? Rubbish songs. Songs for the world. Songs about sex. Songs about love that they have no idea. Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you to the next one that comes along. They don't know love because they don't know God. For God is love. The radio stations take over for what Satan knows the scriptures and not uses it for God like they're doing Nehemiah, using it for the worldly pleasures. How about that? Would you like me to get off music? We're almost done. Listen, Satan's the one who had the tablets, the horns, and all that attached to his body. He was a one man man. Nehemiah gave portions of singers and supporters as door openers, stood at the doors. Every day his portion. And they sanctify holy things unto the Levites. And the Levites sanctified them unto the children of Aaron. They gave to the singers. Then they sanctified the others to, to give to the Levites. And the Levites sanctified that for their high priest. All for the glory of God. Was it given? And the end result, God is praising them. God is blessing them. They're, 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 they're blessing them and, and rejoicing on top of rejoicing on top of rejoicing as God is blessing them and blessing them. That they can be heard far away. 
You want another one for that? I'll tell you another one for that. You're laying in your bed and you hear a bunk a bunk a bunk a bunk a bunk as they're driving down the road. That's Satan there too. Giving glory to the flesh and to him and not to God. That's disturbing the peace. This is a blessing. And that concludes our music lesson for today. It's the scriptures. I'm not going to apologize. <laughs>